Now, opening the eyes gently. What Hridaya, um, what the Hridaya Yoga presents as a meditation and um, the kind of direction that we are taking in the retreat, it is something... Okay. <coughs> Some people are still, so I'm going to mute all. Very good. So, what? Um, Hridaya Yoga presents is something which is very simple. It does not belong to a particular school because it has been mentioned for thousands of years. And it is, I consider it the simplest and the most direct path to the essence of what spirituality is. Something so simple and so near us but somehow not easily recognized. And what, what it is in particular is this capacity for us to somehow um, understand the essence of who we are in this very present moment. Not to fully, fully understand it in its entire comprehension, but definitely the capacity to understand that we are not just our thoughts, not just our emotions, not just our, we can say, um, plans or memories. We are not our name, but we are something which is very central to the very sense of being and the sense of existence which can never disappear. As long as we are aware, as long as we exist, and we can say as long as we are alive, at least from this perspective, from, from our human perspective right now, there are certain elements that will never change. And that is that sense of existence and the awareness which registers, we can call it the witness consciousness, which registers the various phenomena. But we can also observe that there are phenomena which come in and out of existence, you see. So your name can be changed. You may be enamored with your name, Mary, Jack, uh, George, Cloud, etc. You may be somehow very much connected in an emotional and a mental way to respond to that name. So if your name was Mary and I said, Mary, Mary, something inside of you will rise up to answer to that, to recognize, oh, they are speaking about me. But in the same time, in the same time, you could change your name. And in half a year, one year, two, three years, you can actually respond to a different name, which happens often. People take spiritual names, and in a few years, uh, the name is different. Um, and that reaction of I am, hear me, responding to that sound, to that label, recognizing someone is addressing me. But the question is, me who? Who am I? And this self-inquiry is what we'll be addressing and how we'll be meditating in this retreat. In classical yoga, uh, many times the approach is gradual and the approach starts with um, many practices of purification. And often the purification starts with a kind of commitment to the spiritual path itself so you may have, for example, in the Buddhist tradition, 
you may need to do 900,000 practices before you can take such a retreat and speak about self-inquiry. So 900,000, which may take, um, I don't know, maybe three years and a half of prostration and doing guru yoga and other things like this. Other times would simply mean sitting and living near the particular teacher for 20 years um, and little by little the, the teachings will be taught. But um, Ramana Maharishi, a great sage, sage of, um, of India, which is portrayed in this picture behind me right here, um, he kind of reawakened an old, old approach to spirituality, which is very simple, very direct that goes beyond having a specific teacher, though a teacher sometimes can support these processes. And it's just the simplicity of looking at the source of who am I, at the source of our being. As we are watching the screen right now, as we are watching the screen right now, you can observe the computer, the screen, which is there. You can observe the background. You can also observe that you are looking from your eyes towards something. You can even feel the, the peripheral vision. So somehow the sense of seeing comes all the way to the eye level. But if I were to ask you, are you your eyes? You are seeing with your eyes, but are you your eyes? And the answer would be no. Actually, the eyes themselves, they are just a little ball of flesh that has some, what we call in the um, current light spectrum that humans are developing in. Uh, transparent, they have some transparent layers. But even these transparent layers, they hit the back of the eye, which is no longer transparent. We are not seeing from somewhere within ourselves through a form of transparency through the eyes. Everything gets passed through those, um, through those electrical um, impulses, the nerve impulses. So how do we see? And how do we hear? And who is the one who hears? And who is the one who sees? And in the classical um, yoga and the tradition, spiritual traditions, before we even ask this question, we will start for um, a long time to do purification practices. Hatha yoga, forms of stretching, uh, purification of the mind, doing concentration, cleansing techniques, the, the, the karma, the kriya actions, the six kriya actions, yes. So uh, cleansing the nose, the mouth, the stomach, the entire intestine, uh, doing cleansing with pranayama. So many, many things were done before the teachers at that time thought you can even start understanding this very simple question, who is seeing with my eyes? Yeah. And the concentration technique would often start by focusing on an object. So you can take an object like a flower, a leaf, let's say this leaf, or maybe something else, and you'll be looking at it, maybe a candle of some sort, and you'll be simply looking at it and you'll be staring at it, trying to focus your mind to only remain with the leaf, you see? In this very simplicity. Right now, if we're trying to do this, after many, many Zoom and meetings and WhatsApp messages and Facebook, our mind being very, 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 very distracted, very expanded, very agitated, would find it very difficult to remain focused for long, prolonged period of time on a single object. And so therefore the mental concentration and the capacity to bring the mind in would increase as the retreat will progress. 
simply because we are cutting out distractions and we are teaching the mind, we are disciplining the mind to choose to remain on a single object. So we will practice the mental concentration as well. But still, the mental concentration does not, does not answer a more essential question, which is, who is concentrating? Who is having the thoughts? After all, I could actually exist and I could live without thinking. I could have my mind be completely blank. So with no thoughts, with no thoughts, do I cease to exist? Does my sense of beingness and existence disappear? And the answer is no. And it doesn't have to be an answer from the mind, but it's an answer which you can experientially feel it right now, that I am here. My mind can stop, my thinking can stop, and I still continue to exist. Then who am I? Who am I? that continues to exist. You can say the body, I am the body, I am the brain. We can say all of these things, but upon a more profound investigation, and we will enter in these questions more tomorrow, and investigate them tomorrow, you'll notice that there is a sense of inner being. Even if we may not awaken to this profound recognition of awareness, of presence, of witnessing consciousness, still we can recognize that we are not all thoughts. So even the simple recognition that I'm not my thoughts, I'm not the image that I have of myself within my mind, I'm not that virtual mental dimension which exists within my mind. Even recognizing this can bring so much freedom. Imagine being free from your fears, your concerns, your image of how you see yourself or how others see you, the compulsive reactivity, the action and reaction to uh, interaction with other people's uh, or interaction with your own mind and thoughts. Imagine being free from all of that and to be fresh in every moment and to feel yourself as being you in a very authentic way, but an authenticity which is free from an expectation. It's an authenticity which has a freshness from this present moment. In this very present moment, am I so clear and free to be authentic beyond what I judge myself to be, beyond what others judge me to be? Do I have the freedom to be who I am? So at some point, the self-inquiry looks at the deeper dimension of our being and whether we just remain at this level of, of releasing um, a gigantic psychological, I would call it um, uh, attachment to certain images that we have of ourselves. So it'd be a great purification and you'd be um, an incredible capacity to, to free ourselves, to heal ourselves. So we can even hear such a retreat can be so powerful, such a recognition. Of course, if one would be interested in a, we can say, um, would be interested in a, a depth of a fascination, a depth of existence, a philosophical question, or a curiosity, what is truth? What is reality? Who am I? Who am I at the core of me? Yes, I'm not my thoughts, and yes, I'm not this 
maybe memories, I'm not the image I create of myself, though I embrace it and I love it. But beyond this, who am I? Is what is the truth of my existence? What is this? And here, in, in, this, in this very question, in this very thirst, we can start coming deeply, deeply to what the sages have spoken about, to what the Buddha and Jesus and um, all the beings that express those teachings of the Upanishads and the Vedas and Christianities and the Sufis and all the different branches of spirituality and religions that ended up um, developing through life. I wouldn't confuse the essence of spirituality with a particular religion, um, though either way things can be helped, supported, or sometimes through the dogma not supported. So maybe we don't want to enter into these questions right now. But the essence of any genuine spirituality will be coming to this recognition of the truth. Is there a truth which is not relative? Is there a truth which is not relative? Is there a truth that is the ultimate truth? Is there a reality that cannot be reduced any further? So for example, we can imagine right now, we can imagine right now that we live in the matrix. How would you know that you are living in the matrix or not? You cannot know. You can even imagine that you are a butterfly dreaming to be a human. And there are some philosophical uh, exercises that go so profound and say, how could you test this? How would you be able to test this? And at the bottom of these exercises, which actually are forms of contemplation and meditation, you wouldn't be able to really give an honest, real truth. You wouldn't be able to confirm anything there. But you can always confirm you exist because the sense of existence is not related to a thought, is not related to um, just the senses that maybe if you're in a matrix, the, the senses could be hijacked, but it's that feeling of I am, you see? And the essence of the spiritual endeavor in most of the spiritualities will end up in this question of who, who am I, in this resting of this sense of beingness and amness, I amness, in the sense of reducing all external phenomena, all external focusing, either in a meditation on a single object or through that distraction of the mind on the many objects throughout our entire life, our entire day and bringing it to a sense of beingness and actually redirecting, redirecting the awareness. So instead of being outwardly towards the object, to be towards the subject itself, to be towards the awareness itself. So how do we in the meditation quiet the mind by concentrating the mind and then redirect the awareness towards the awareness itself, towards the sense of existence, towards the sense of me, towards the sense of beingness. See? And this is where the magic happens. So for most beings, even just this recognition can be already very profound. To feel that you are resting as a deeper sense of existence and beingness than just the story of your life. But the process of spiritual awakening is related to resting in this recognition quietly and silently until some very hidden and more profound layers of compulsion habits, some veils, some filters of 
seeing or interpreting our life start dissolving and everything starts dissolving until the sense of beingness and I amness will remain more and more pure. And this is the process. It's so simple. It's so simple. And everything we'll do in this retreat, we may do a, a prayer, we may do a technique like blowing up on the embers of the heart. We will have lectures. We will have maybe the recognition of the subtle sound, the nada. Everything that we'll do in this retreat will be related to only this, the simplicity of this. Can I, at any point, connect to a sense of beingness awareness? We can call it presence, awareness, witness consciousness, beingness, existence, I amness. There are many names for this. But can I come to a deeper resting within my beingness, a deeper authenticity in this present moment. A silence which is alive, a stillness which exists even though things are dynamic and moving. We will explore this, for example, in the Hatha Yoga, in, in the time allows through walking meditation. So, this is the exploration of the retreat. Part of this retreat exploration will also be how do we integrate this recognition of the deeper dimension of who we are, which is we are not adding anything, it's just a recognition, it's just a choosing to look somewhere, which is or someplace, which is already here but we naturally and commonly tend to ignore. So now we will be somehow, somehow recognizing that all life is happening with all its dance and also I am in that authenticity, in that silence, in that centeredness. And part of the retreat, of course, will be dedicated towards this recognition that is here already, but we this, this reality that we tend to somehow ignore. So bringing attention to this, which is already here, to this beingness, but also a portion of the retreat, which is very natural, will be the natural question. So if there is this depth, how do I integrate life in this so how do i integrate this in life what does this mean to my life how will this transform my human existence and an even more profound question would mean if i am an existence which is beyond my thoughts my emotions and we'll see soon enough even beyond this physical body if you'd be open to experiment in that way. If we were to choose during this retreat to rest in that way, then what is life? What is manifestation? What is all this existence? What are other human beings? What is the earth? What is the physical universe? What is the emotional universe? What is the mental universe? What are all these things which are happening to this awareness? What is the relationship between the two? So at some point, of course, will be very much interested in this, in this recognition, in this, this human existence integrated with this profound depth of recognition. But an even deeper question starts rising. And these are the questions that the sages will continue going further and further. 
part of this um, retreat, my guidance would be during this retreat to not remain in a mind. So even now as I'm speaking, I'm hoping that some of you can start already creating a little bit of space between, oh, this is a thought, this is a mood, a feeling, this is the body, and somehow I'm witnessing them, a kind of a spaciousness around all this phenomena, objects. But what is important is not to maintain these things as an idea in the mind, because again, then you just be still in the realm of the mind. But how do we experientially rest into this? So this, ex this invitation to rest into the sense of existence, of, into the experience of beings, of being, of awareness will be again and again um, um, emphasized. And as we enter deeper into these meditations, you may notice that some meditations may reveal for some of you even some peak experiences, some experiences which may generate a different perspective of life. An experience that, yes, you may want to confirm with the teacher or share it in the final sharing with everyone else, but ultimately, it doesn't need to be confirmed because it's lived in a very, very alive way. You know it. You feel yourself existence with such an incredible vividness that you don't need to ask others. And in that recognition of your own source of existence, you may, you may start understanding life and seeing life in a very different way, instantaneously, spontaneously. You may feel a connectedness to all the participants, to the plants, to the trees, which cannot be denied. So how can I feel a tree? How can I feel others in this retreat? How can I feel my parents or my siblings or my partners? How can I feel them when I'm alone in a meditation? How can I have this very powerful connection where I feel almost like I'm one with them? And when these things appear, then our consensus reality will be very much questioned and will enter into that groove which incited all the spiritual masters to continue the investigation and to um, generate many, many teachings about a reality which is about a freedom, a freedom from living in only a particular point of view, in a personal point of view. So uh, let's leave this introduction for now here. And um, before I turn on the audio for everyone who wants to share or ask any more questions, let's just take a moment to meditate together. We are an hour and a half into our discussion, which is already so much shorter than the one we have when we teach the retreat live in the center. But let's give ourselves maybe another 10 minutes, 15 minutes for any other questions. But for the next three, four minutes. Let's sit together in a short, simple meditation with the spine straight. You can take a breath or two and feel if the body is relaxed. You may find that certain unnecessary muscles are somehow contracting, so relax them in the fingers. But as you relax, you also become more transparent.
relaxing the mind, the thoughts, the grasping on the thoughts, the wanting to follow thoughts, relaxing the mood, the feelings, the emotions, which means the emotions become more transparent, the mind becomes more transparent. Resting in the middle of the chest, a little to the right. Now we ask the question, who am I? Who am I? And upon asking this question, let's for now focus on the space of awareness. Whatever phenomena comes up, thought, sound, light, image, we also recognize the awareness that registers it. A boundless, Transparent awareness. And you may notice that this is actually so simple, so simple, just a sense of resting. So just a few more moments, just resting. Let's do it like we usually do it in the retreat. I'm going to ring the bell. In just a few more moments. Simply resting. Feel it's a peace and quietness. And Keep this connection with the heart, with this inner dimension. You gently open the eyes. You will see me often bringing my palms to the chest, an act of recognition of this depth, not only within, but without as well. And it's such a beautiful gesture because um, sometimes you can do it spontaneously to a tree, to a bee, to, um, to a flower, to the sky, to the earth. But it's so beautiful when it's also done in that recognition to another human being. So somehow this depth, this depth of being, the simplicity of the silence, this life silence, is being recognized here and there.
Entire space becomes sacred. A simple gesture makes all existence sacred. So I will turn on uh, sound to see if there are any more questions. All of you are. So are there any questions or anything that you want to do in order before we start again tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning, we will meet to start with the consecration of the retreat. And we're already entering our first laws of teachings and meditation. Um, are there any questions? Yes, there's a question from Ray. Yes, Ray. Hi. Um, I'm not trying to be flippant, uh, but what do we do if we find ourselves not be able to focus, but in fact, Drifting off and falling asleep. I fully expect that the majority of the very part of you will fall asleep because many times we prepare prepare for this uh, retreat and we get busy in the last evening. Tomorrow morning we will speak about this method of um, bringing the mind to center and what to do if we feel sleepy. So um, don't judge yourself and don't expect that it should be in, in a different way. The question is not how to be in a specific way, but how do I, how am I very authentically with myself in a loving and compassionate way? So this is what is happening now. This is what's happening now. So how do I move from what is happening now? What, what are the little steps that I can take that in the end will bring me towards the capacity to focus? And sometimes the little step may be to just sit up more straight, maybe to open the eyes a little bit, to stand up. We'll speak about this tomorrow. Uh, but it needs to be done with love and compassion, without expectation, and give it a due time. We cannot learn um, and retrain the mind in a day or two or three, though even in three days, there'll be moments of um, quiet and silence, which um, are very beautiful. Yes. I don't know if this answered your question completely, but ask again tomorrow after we have the morning session if, um, if the questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you, Pascal. Any other question? So just so you know, um, do not expect these videos tomorrow. All of you will be as panelists, yes? Uh, sorry, will be as attendees. And right now, um, both Hadi, Heather, and, and myself, we will change you again, we will change you again to attendees. So this view that we have right now will be only the view that we'll have in the evening. And we will have it, but we will close. We will close our eyes so we won't stare at each other. And I will also ask you to pin my video. If you right click on my video or somewhere on my video, there should be an option to pin me um, so, we can, so we are not looking or staring at each other during this time. But the reality is that um, the majority of the retreat will happen as a 
attendees, yes? And I'm gonna switch you again to attendees soon. I see there's a question from Andrew. And then from that, from the attendee view, see if you have any questions from there as well. So yes, Andrew, do you wanna ask a question? Claude, I just had a comment. I, I'm having a hard time hearing you sometimes. Your volume is fading in and out um, and my volume is on maximum. So maybe if you could bring your mic closer to your, your face for the uh, retreat following this. Yes, I'm also, right now I'm recording this session and I will, I will review the view. I'll, I will review the video every day um, not every day, but um, until I will be able to get the proper setup. So there is a microphone that will be closer to me and I will experiment with this um, maybe definitely until tomorrow afternoon. Some of these issues should be resolved, um, but already by tomorrow morning, we should be better, I expect. Thank you for this feedback. And please continue giving this feedback to, to Hadi and Heather and they'll mention it to me. Um, now let's put all of you in the attendee to see what it looks like, how most of the retreat will be like. So um, Hadi and Heather to just change role to attendee. Yes, Martin just said that he switched the audio settings when I did this and he's correct, I did do that. So now I changed back the audio setting. Thank you, Martin. Um, and um, we will, yes, and I will run some more experiments tonight for sure. And we will try to resolve the audio sound the audio connection. Very good. Now, this is what you will look like when you will be during the retreat for the morning, for the Hatha Yoga, and for the um, afternoon, for the Q&A. And in the last meditation in the evening, um, we will turn again, make you all panelists and you'll be muted. The raising of the hands, I don't know if we can disable this or not, but in general, this will be ignored. So the hand raising will be ignored because um, we cannot answer um, in this way. The format is a little bit different. So we will address the questions usually in the evening. Um, and if we have some questions that are relevant or some announcements, we'll address them also whenever we have teachings. But in the beginning of the meditation, then this is not um, possible and we will not have that approach. Right now, I'm not sure if you can still raise your hand um, from the attendee, but if you have any questions, so way raise the hand and I'm gonna lower it, okay? Um, so if you have any questions about this, maybe you can ask, you can run a little test. Um, and there's also some suggestion to reduce the background noise. Um, better if the background 
noise be off. Thank you, Scott. Yes, so I hope the retreat will get better and better audio-wise because you will make a wonderful difference. And without having so many videos, also the quality of the transmission will be better as well. Thank you. Okay, so are there any more questions from the perspective of the attendees? No? Okay, so for the last time, we're going to turn you back to panelists just to say goodbye and a bow so you can turn your video on and to say hello verbally. And um, then we will see each other tomorrow morning in this attendee kind of um, quality. And uh, we will keep in touch like this. Maybe Hadi and Hilda can also talk. Change everyone's panelist. I'm gonna mute you. Thank you. <laughs> You again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. See you all tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Helen. Oh, so much good for people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Happy retreat, everyone. Thank you, Cloud. Thank you. Thank you, Cloud. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> good night, night. Bonnui. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good you Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye, sister. <laughs> <laughs>